And welcome back to The Breakfast. It's time for, of course, our news review. We have a couple of stories to share with you on Off the Press this morning. Joining us also is uh, Mr. Chris Wandu. Thank you so much for stepping in and uh, being with us on the program. Thank you very much for having me. I hope that we can have a very, very interesting review on uh, these uh, stories across uh, the nation this morning. I hope We're going to be starting with the Tribune uh, newspapers this morning and seeing how many major stories that we can share as quickly as possible um, with you guys. Um, of course, Chris Wando, I'm sure that you're also eager <laughs> to share your thoughts. All right, starting with the Tribune this morning, mass defection looms in the APC and PDP as Ondo Deputy Governor quits the PDP for ZLP. COVID-19, no testing done yet in 85 local governments across 20 states, says the PTF. And um, so also says Nigeria yet to reach pandemic peak. Appeal court sets aside deregistration of political parties, INEC to approach Supreme Court. Also, Nupeng calls of strike reaches agreement with Lagos government. Chief Tansi Tonsu claims 13 lives in Bainwe community. A court sentence as a musician to death for blasphemy in Kano State. That's also one of the stories. And uh, uh, Northeastern governors tell Buhari why insurgents are able to recruit more. Um, what else uh, can we find? Uh, federal government to remove 23,089 parastatals and pensioners from a payroll. ASU set to replace IPPIS with UTAS as uh, the Lebanese government resigns after deadly Beirut blast protest. And last one uh, we're sharing this morning, jam shifts admissions dates to September 7th. Um, it's, it's a lot. It is. So um, where would you like to pick up from? Well, uh, we should start with the main headline, uh, why Boko Haram is um, recruiting more. Yeah. For me, uh, that shouldn't be an issue. I'm not interested why Boko Haram is recruiting more. Well, what I'm interested in, what are we doing more? to be able to curb the rising level of insurgency across the country, especially in the Northeast. That should be, um, that should be the worry for us. And not, uh, of course, Boko Haram will always <laughs> recruit, it's expectedly, yeah. expectedly. So um, that should be much of concern. But um, what are we doing? Um, what, some, what new are we doing? Uh, what new strategies are we putting in place? What level of intels are we getting? and to be able to support what the military is doing. What is the, our capability? What, uh, what level of equipment are we getting new? What level of, how prepared are our soldiers? How well motivated are they? Those are the issues that should be uh, concerning the governor. So um, to me, uh, talking about um, what um, that Boko Haram is um, recruiting more or not, to me, is, is no big deal. Yeah. Yes, so for me, if they are recruiting more, what are you doing to be able to, because if they're recruiting, definitely they're recruiting from your own, within your own confines. So what are you doing to be able to stop them from recruiting? How are you empowering people on ground to make whatever Boko Haram is offering them to be less attractive to them compared to what, what you are giving them? So if the people don't have the way we do, and they are not getting this, and they're getting some, it's, it's human nature, okay? So, and um, we have been talking about the, issue of a majority system in the north, that in itself is a problem. Yeah. Because for me, that is a time bomb waiting to explode. At any given point in time, um, a hungry man is an angry man, and if you don't send these kids to school, they becomes a tool, easy tool for people to manipulate and use for whatever nefarious activities they have. So for me, the northern governors should think more, think out of, um, think better and yeah. uh, more progressively on ways to be able to make sure that the fight against insurgency does not go beyond what we're having now. All right. Another thing that was also in the uh, Tribune this morning, the deregistration of 22 political parties. Of course, there was um, a court ruling yesterday that uh, declared it um, um, illegal uh, for INEC to deregister them. They have now decided that they will be going to the Supreme Court to uh, seek a redress. W what are your thoughts? Well, I know that's where it end. It will definitely end at the Supreme Court because even Aine came out with a statement last night that um, there are two conflicting judgments Court <laughs> from courts of uh, competent jurisdiction. And um, for that, that they are confused on what. So, uh, expectedly, I expect INEC to appeal. The APS court will be the final arbiter in this. So, what is to be determined is whether the INEC has the power to deregister any political party or yeah. not, and what are the criteria to be used 
to register those political parties. I believe that the powers of INEC was well spread out in the electoral arts that established um, the INEC, yeah. uh, as well as um, the 1999 constitution as amended. So um, we have to, it's not yet Uhuru, but both for the political parties and for INEC. But for me, my personal opinion is that I think we're having too many political parties uh, for me. And um, people just wake up any day and just say they want to register political parties and that's where it ends. They don't go out co to converse for votes. All they just wait is for the drop from INEC at, the, at, the, at any given election, um, the stipends that are given out, or towards an election, they wait at the end of it, or two, about two, three days to the election, they say, oh, we are supporting um, this particular party. Oh, we have yeah. come together. You understand what, that, what they've been doing? Look at the presidential support, election. Support of a different the candidate. major, the yeah. major yeah. political yeah. parties at the end of it, they just disappear. Nobody says so. Um, I would be, the, I, I would go for a leaner political party platform so that people can have a choice. Yeah. But the choice is not when you pull about 99 to 100 political parties. Even in, in, Western, in the Western world, in the United States, there are so many political parties, but there are two major yeah, political the Republicans political and the Democrats. Yeah. We go to the United Kingdom, the same thing, the Labour uh, Party and the other one. So um, I'm for, I, for one, would rather think that we should go for leaner political parties so that people can be able to have the best of choices Better in options. terms of getting yeah. All right, so, let's, so let's, let's see what we can find on the uh, Punch uh, newspapers, which uh, we have uh, coming up next. Uh, PTF blames governors for crowds at Edo rallies and uh, Kashamu's uh, burial. Also on the point, this morning, Nigeria will become West Africa's gold-producing hub, says the federal government. Uh, Isha Shagay's uh, attack salami panel faults suspects' testimonies against Magu. Oil marketing firms' revenues plunged by 204.52 billion naira. That's also on the punch. And deregistration ruling, INEC confused on judgment as it heads for uh, Supreme Court. Also this morning on the punch, resettling displaced residents will stop Boko Haram's recruitments, says Northeast Governors. And post-UME test begins uh, September 7th, says Jam. That's also on the punch. Also, a few others that I would quickly also share. I have done what Mimiko couldn't do in eight years, says Akiri Dulu. That's also on the punch. Lagos SARS personnel brutalize and extort man for holding his brother's passport. For Oshomole, Edo state election is do or die, Governor Yeson Wike says. And... Um, of course, uh, we took this earlier on the Tribune. 85 local governments in 20 states yet to conduct coronavirus tests, says Task Force. Makinde Sachs, Works Commissioner, uh, swaps two portfolios. And gunmen kill 13 in fresh Bainway community attack. Let's, there's so much on the punch this morning. Um, I think, you know, the, the major one is the PTF blaming, um, of course, the governors for crowds at uh, burials and campaign rallies. Uh, so, but you can just go ahead. We, 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 let's see where we start from. Yes, um, let me start with the with statement created to the chairman of PAC, uh, Professor Sagi. Um, uh, it's worrisome for me um, when you have uh, your government and you're also criticizing activities. Uh, it shows some level of distortion within the government uh, because um, Sage is a, a chairman of PAC, which is a, a government agency. Yeah. And um, the, the probe going on was set up by the presidency. You're also talking of the office of the attorney general. But, uh, there should be some level of synergy. We don't give a damn. If once you are in government, you think you are in government, you should drop your cabin of uh, an activist. If you want to be an activist, you come out, to, you resign your job. That is my personal opinion. You resign your job um, as a member of the government and stand uh, and criticize. Yeah. So if, if uh, Professor Sage uh, has any issue with the investigation uh, panel and people who invited and there's a there are better channel of, uh, way of channeling that. And being the chairman of, is he speaking as a person or is he speaking as a chairman of PAC? Because when you, you are chairman of a, 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 an agency, whatever statement you make will be seen as being the position of the committee or whatever they are on. So that is my own. I think um, um, Justice Salami should be allowed to do his job. And when he presents, um, after the findings, That's make his presentation to the uh, uh, federal government, then we can, talk, we can take it up from there. Then talking about COVID and the uh, various crowds, is expected, are you in Edo State, um, and all those things and the rest of them, where there are going to be election, how do you be able to cope that? I next was going to come out with guidelines. I don't know whether the guideline includes how political parties are going to conduct their rallies. 
if you understand what I'm trying yeah. to say. How do you conduct your rally? Are you going to sit in the comfort of your house and say, everybody, come on, Zoom, let us... <laughs> it will be very, very difficult because they are going to canvass for votes and they're moving from one local government to the other. I don't know how that's going to pan out. Then to the burial of um, um, Senator Kashamu, it's a very, very sad situation because what we've just seen is what panned out during the burial of um, um, Abakari and yeah. some other uh, prominent Nigerians. And, uh, I personally think that this thing should happen. There's a protocol that the NCDC came out with on how people that died of COVID-19 should be buried, uh, buried. I don't know why we're not going through that. Why do we make it so open that we announce the day the burial is going to be taking place who and people for people to rush in and the rest of them? Now the Google State government is saying that the people that attended the burial should go on isolation. How do you isolate them? Do you know who are there? How do you identify, how do you identify those that we are there? And how to, so it, for me, is, there, I, I think that we should be more proactive. If what I think should happen is that there's going to be burial of such, that shouldn't be announced. It should be more like a family affair. Look at even the one that of the Oyo State, the former governor. Despite the fact that the family tried to make it a low key and a family affair, people still surge and the rest of them. Yeah. Yet. So I think we should find a more better way of um, handling issues like that. And then um, now coming to the, there was one about the issue of um, a musician that was sentenced to death. Yeah, to death. Yes, um, in, in Kano. Kano. Yeah. It's rather unfortunate. Um, but. Um, it is the Nigerian Constitution, the Nigerian Constitution, the Criminal Code, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Penal Code. Uh, don't mind me, I'm talking like a student of law now. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm thinking yeah. it's... Uh, so, it's but, like... yes, but specific, the Penal Code had um, specific uh, definitions on how issues like that can, can be handled. But for me, uh, is, is, when it comes uh, to show blasphemy, of religion, um, is that also part of, part of things that can be punished by death in uh, Nigeria? Within the penal code, probably it is. I'm not very sure. I don't know. Okay, but okay. the fact is that um, we should also be mindful of our transits here. Um, some part of the country take religion too personal and individualistic, and the rest of them. We've seen several times things like that happened. Yeah. Um, but. Um, the, the young man still have 30 days to appeal, appeal. but yeah. definitely within me, I know that that sentence will not be carried out because none have been done in the past few in, in the past years, and they also take the government to be able to sign off on that. It would, which I, it doubt. Would, um, I mean, it would be a great conversation to have well, with regards, uh, you know, the Nigerian Constitution and the yes. Sharia, you know, laws that the we penal code and the criminal and, um, law. Yes, and, uh, so, which, which, which of yes. them should actually take um, um, president? President. Yes, you know, when, when it comes to issue yeah. of that nature. All right, let's see what we can find on the Nation newspapers this morning. Um, uh, as much quickly as possible. On insecurity, President Buhari blames lean resources and COVID-19. Undo Deputy Governor joins ZLP and also 95-year-old survives COVID-19 in Oyo State. Varsity's admission to begin September 27th on, um, on Edo State um, and Ondo State once again, the governorship elections. Let peace reign, Obaseki urges opposition. Um, one or two others, uh, poverty driving more people to join Boko Haram, says Zulum. Um, these are the major stories on the nation newspapers this morning. 60% of COVID-19 cases in Lagos and FCT and Oyo State. Um, Eduan Rivers also says a PTF. Um, all right, I think these are the major ones. Governor's agenda is deceptive, says Zayamu. And uh, in Ondo State, Tunji Ojo, Ojo leads uh, ZLP chiefs to back Akeri Dulu as the governor slams Mimiko for abandoning projects. All right. <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, well, uh, let's go to Undo. Um, the defection of the deputy governor from APC to PDP to now ZLP. Uh, the deputy um, chief Ajay is turning to a rolling stone that I gather seems not to be gathering anymore. <laughs> yeah, so he um, was desperate enough to want to get the PDP ticket and couldn't get it. Now he's moving to ZLP. And uh, we just have a few days and weeks before the election. I don't know how we'll be able to do that. But that's typical of our politicians. It, it's uh, governance uh, service is not about, must not always be about you, be at the head. You can always contribute to your own quota. Um, Chief Obafemi Awolowo tried several to be president of Nigeria. But even at that, when he got it, he decided to become a statesman. And you could see his contribution to humanity years after he died. 
You understand what I'm trying yeah. to say? Uh, his legacies are still there. So it's not composite that you must, you must strive to be a governor, must to be a president, or strive to be a local government That's chairman right. and to be able to deliver um, people. But I wish him the best of luck. Um, back to insecurity, Buhari blames lean resources of COVID-19. Prior to COVID-19, what have you done about um, insurgency? Um, so um, it's just that um, COVID is becoming the fall, fall guy. Everything that happens now is not blame of uh, COVID-19. Yeah. But um, let us also look at it from the point that so much has been uh, spent uh, in terms of these insurgencies. Our defense budget probably is the highest vis-a-vis um, -vis other sectors. And uh, so if we're budgeting that much for, for security, uh, we should be able to get some results. So I don't think that um, blaming COVID for now should be blamed for the work we should be doing is trying to strategize. Chad, are doing, Chad is already doing their own bit. So mother, the United States um, government came out a few days ago with an Intel uh, intelligence report yeah. on what is happening, ISWAP, um, and all the IS, uh, IS, ICIS moving towards West Africa and Nigeria. We should be looking at those intelligence reports and see how we can be able to nip this in the bud rather than just blaming um, COVID and the rest of them. There is more we can do. And at the end of it, the book we stop at the table of the president. So um, some people recently, as we go on, you will see that there's still more call for the service chiefs to be um, sacked. Are they to be sacked or not to be sacked? The president has made up his mind that he's not sacking them, but has given them new mandate to be able to make sure that they need this in the board. If they, they can, can they be able to do it? Let's just wait and see. There's also a story, you know, also um, in, in, in the same uh, space talking about uh, poverty being one of the reason, major reasons for uh, recruiting into Boko Haram or making people vulnerable to be recruited into Boko Haram. Um, if, you, if you put that side by side with the um, well, ex-insurgents that have been reintegrated into society and all of that, um, do you think that is a suitable process to get them away from that state of poverty and Poverty has always been with us and will always remain with us till eternity. Even to the end of this generation, poverty will always, we always have people that cannot be able to fend themselves yeah. for themselves. You understand? But within that ambit, a criminal will always be a criminal. They are millionaire robbers. They are millionaire kidnappers. Is, yeah. Are we going to say that it's because of poverty that went into a kidnapping? Definitely not. Some people out of their personal greed or for whatever reason that they, you understand, some people yeah. always go into crime. In respect, there are still, even within those, there are still those that are poorer than the so-called people that have been recruited. That, but why do they, why do they refuse to be? So it's more of an individual thing, uh, and also societal value. Some people have lost um, the values that some of us grew up with. When you are just told, when you are growing up, please don't steal. When you go to school, don't steal the pi pencil. Don't steal the biro of your uh, classmate. Yeah. That is where it starts. Then our religious leaders have them be doing what they're supposed to do in churches these days instead of people of preaching that, oh, don't go against, they don't do that. The people, pastors are preaching about uh, influence, how to become rich, how to become. So all those kind of things, you, you know, that in itself propel people into going into certain things. That right. So for me, um, it's not about poverty. It's not a poverty. It's the fact that some people have lost their mentality on how to approach issues and able to decide uh, between good and bad. And when they've decided to go for bad, then there's nothing you can do about it. All we right. can only but continue to talk to people to try to stay away from and that. For whatever you do, there's always a price for it. And we should, do, we should stop encouraging and reabsorbing people after they've committed some of this crime. And that is part of the problem we are having. If you understand what I'm trying to say, yeah. somebody killed for several years. So he said he has, he's not repentant. Boko Haram, we're going to re, uh, you reintegrate him, and you're going to send him abroad for this. Time. What kind of lesson are you? Saying? So any other person that wants to go into that, believe that if he's caught one day and he says he's, right. he has repented, that is an yeah. issue. Let's see what we can find on the uh, Guardian newspapers this morning, uh, as, as quickly as possible. Also, um, uh, major news headlines: investors lose 2.63 trillion naira. Um, it says also stakeholders or shareholders to forfeit dividends as profits shrink. Cadbury, Total and Unilever, others record huge losses. Um, also on the Guardian newspapers, again, Nigerians tell President Buhari to fire the service chiefs, which you just mentioned. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, what else can we find on the Guardian? 13 killed in Bainway over traditional stool. Also, post UME to begin in varsities and polies, others by September 7th. 
take back your country, Naba and Utomi charge Nigerians. Um, and uh, of course, uh, The Guardian disowns fake Facebook page. Also this morning, a security meeting holds in Aso Rock. Um, and of course, that's um, with regards to storytelling uh, Nigerians asking the president to fire service chiefs. Uh, Neza tells the president also. Um, so I think we have um, a couple of stories that we haven't looked at here. The 13 people, and I, I would like us to start with this one, 13 people killed in um, a traditional um, crisis uh, in Benue State. Um, it's important because, you know, I feel like we, um, what, what would you say with regards naming certain incidents as tribal clashes and reprisal attacks, um, does that solve the issue? Does that make it easier to accept the reason, you know, these people have been killed? Well, um, there will always be banditry. There will always be there is, uh, reprisal attacks, there is insurgency, and it can also be localized, um, if you understand what I mean. So if a, an uprising is localized as it, as it were in the issue of um, Benue State, then um, it, I just feel that um, our people speak so much interest in mundane issues. Um, if, if what you have to kill yourself because somebody was making a, a local chief or whatever, you, your own side of this thing, those are not. That, that is also the, our uh, poverty. Now we cannot take it to the poverty issue of poverty now. Yeah. Yes, um, this I can I, I can use this to poverty. Part of it is because if you are gainfully employed, as you are here, I don't think you'll be concerned with the politics going on in your village. You are more concerned on your job, on how to fend your family and the rest of them. You don't even have the time to start going home to start engaging yourself in local politics and the rest of them. So why should people kill? Even in, in another southwest state, some days I think I, I don't know it, one of these states. I know that um, some people were killed recently over a, a, a festival that was postponed. The, uh, the local so COVID-19. Yes, yeah. you, you remember that story yeah. where the the local chief said, "No, we cannot be able to go ahead with this because of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. We don't need to go." People went to Bazaar and started um, killing themselves and the rest of them. That is how. That also shows the level at which we value life in this country. Life is not. We we can't in numbers these days. When you say somebody dies, it's no big deal. When you see on front page of newspaper, or on television, or radio, or radio, or whatever, online, I said so many people no longer get. In yeah. those days, when you hear that one person died, there's a shock. Okay, look at what happened in, in, in Lebanon, Beirut. A whole government collapsed just yesterday, just because of that just bomb blast yeah. that happened at the seaport. But what do we have here? We have people, government, uh, government, those in government and the rest of them, all sorts of challenges and there's uh, nobody agrees to resign. And worst case scenario, they say you can just talk that nothing happens. So that is the problem and it is an issue that we should be able to tackle. Our people should be paying more attention to things that concern them rather than the, mund rather than the mundane. And that is, uh, is a challenge for me. Chris Wanda, thank you so much for your thoughts this morning um, off the press. It's always a pleasure, you know, listening to your thoughts on uh, these stories making headlines. Thank you very much for having me. Look forward to seeing you again. Do have a nice day. And uh, that's all we have for you on Off the Press this morning. Stay with us. Uh, the news on the hour is coming up next.